For some, college is a given. The next step after receiving that high school diploma and on into adulthood. But for many, college is a privilege. A lucky if you even get there type of privilege. A privilege and opportunity that so many young people don't even get to experience just because they can't afford it or their parents didn't go so they feel a sense of obligation to take care of their families. So what a privilege it is for these young African-American men and women to be here. The first of the two program was game. The emphasis at the time was primarily on African American males uh, with the sole purpose and mission focused toward retention and graduation. <clears throat> While that is still uh, an intentional uh, mission of the SOAR program, uh, we also saw that it was equally important to put greater emphasis on retaining African-American girls. As a result, the FAME program was born. For freshmen, Patrick and Amajanis, FAME and GAME have been key essentials to their college survival thus far. Not only does the program instill discipline, responsibility, basic tools for navigating through your freshman year, but it's also a class that students receive college credit for, seeing as though they study a lot of African American literature. The class is taught by Black Studies professor Howard Ramsey. I've been a professor since uh, 2003 at SIUE, and I started working with GAME in 2004. And I started working with Fame in 2008. So I'm coming up on 10 years with Fame, and that wow, it's over 10 years with Game. Parents that went to college, grandparents that went to college, sisters that went to college. So they're putting it all in. Yeah, a large number of the guys in my class actually are first generation college students. And so uh, they're going to be the first ones in their family to go or complete college. So it's a big thing for them thinking about that. It also means challenges because they haven't had the chance to think about, uh, just have a long experience with someone at home who can explain what certain things are like that they go through. I really didn't think about going to college until like my junior year of high school. And I only thought about going to college because I hit rock bottom my junior year. Like my grades were slipping. And then I woke up one morning and I told myself that I didn't want to live check and check with my parents. So I decided to get back on my high horse and do what I need to do. Nene is similar to Patrick in many ways. Member of FAME, this Springfield native is also a first generation college student. Not really knowing what to expect when she got here, her transition started off a little rocky. But being a part of FAME helps smoothing it out a bit bringing comfort and putting herself in a position to excel academically. I think the biggest challenge was, I guess, yeah, studying is it's so like, there's such a social atmosphere here and even in fame that like sometimes you have to step back from that and remember why you're here. But as long as you're like you study, you're fine. And with fame, it was just nice being around like other African American women, um, getting to know them. The friends I've made here are from fame, like so that's really nice. It was just mm -hmm. nice to meet other African American women. It's like a home away from home, so that was nice to have getting here. One of the requirements for being a part of fame and game is maintaining a certain number of tutoring hours per week. One of the ways Dr. Patterson and Ramsey keep track is by having the students sign in at the front desk of the SOAR office with former FAME student, Lauren Fox. The second week, oh my goodness. I can tell you, the second week of college, we was in study tables. It's actually how we bonded. <laughs> like, and I started crying. <laughs> we, both, we both started. My professors gave me so much homework in that one day. And I was like, that's what I can't go. I can't do this anymore. I think about I think I'm gonna drop out. He was in the same boat as me. When the students enrolled in the programs, it was mentioned that progress reports would be sent home as a requirement as well. I expected their reaction to the progress reports to be negative, but surprisingly, they didn't mind. Sometimes it's it's funny because some of the rules that we have that I think they respond negatively to are things like, hey, be in the class on time. Because a lot of professors, I guess, it just doesn't matter. They don't really 
have any ex expectation on that. I mean, they don't like for students to show up late, but it's not something they will call out. But it's something we make a big deal about. And it's more about maybe just saying what it means to pay attention to detail. And I just think the study hours, doing things like getting used to a pattern, sometimes I think students get frustrated with. Uh, and so it's interesting, a kind of back and forth we'll do through the whole year, but later on they're always much more positive about it. It was good about the progress reports because then, like, I guess I have an incentive to, like, make sure I do all right. Um, knowing my parents are going to get those progress reports, that's a really big deal. And the study hours aren't, like, a problem at all. I definitely learned how to be independent. That was one of the main things that they were stressing us to be, you know, was independent. You know, me just coming out of high school, they kind of babied us in a way, but still they kind of told us, like, look, this is what you have to do. This is the way to be successful. We're going to help you. And when you finish your freshman year, spread your wings and learn. When I did need the help, I always had Ramsey and Dr. Pete to rely on. Like a typical class day for game and fame is covering African American literature and then having discussions about what we're covering. And so sometimes it's it's kind of gets into a routine because we know some of the literature will come back to certain authors over again. We went to the Underground Railroad Museum in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we saw basically like just things like from African American history, like slave time, like the slave period. Specifically, we saw like a slave cabin, like an actual slave cabin in the museum. And it made you like eye open, like your actual history, because like to be African American, so special because you can actually say like, this is my history. And to know that like your ancestors like were treated this way, had to undergo this. It's like really remarkable because it's different from like just hearing about it or like watching a movie. Like you physically got to see like um, like the houses and like the chains and stuff like that. Aside from the African American literature and required tutoring hours, it was also required for students to dress up for class, getting in the habit of dressing for professional settings. Even former students recalled how that was beneficial to them and just being part of the program as a whole. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday dress ups. First, going into it, I did not want to dress up. But after I saw how cool all the older bros were doing, they like pulling off out, out, outfits and making um, dress clothes seem acceptable and stuff, it made me want to do it. So I definitely appreciate it. And I put forth effort into it. I wanted to be like the freshest fame and game guy. So it definitely made me want to like pull out my P's and Q's when it came to dressing. <laughs> you couldn't wait. Couldn't wait to hear about the dressing up. Could uh, not you wait. Guys feel about dressing <laughs> up every Tuesday and Thursday for class. And the guy started off, oh, you please, please. Look, I understand it. I really do. I understand we have to dress up as scholars and everything, but I just don't like dressing up two days. Every, yeah. Week. Like, I'll do it Tuesday, but then I got to put that, I got to put something else on on Thursday. Like, and people always looking at me like, why are you so dressed up? Like, that's not part of the game. What's the game? Dude, then I, I hate like, that question. Go I hate that I'm question. Gonna, where's orientated? There's no bowling game. And I'm just like, bro. We had days where we had to dress up in my fraternity for chapter days, which was Wednesdays after I pledged. And that, with that fame and game background, already gave me, like, the right tools to wrap my mind around how I should dress, business casual, what ways I should come to meetings, and everything. So it was definitely helpful. One of the things I like about the program, too, is that I am able to maintain these relationships with them after their first year with me. Sometimes those relationships get stronger because I think when you're in a class and I'm grading them, they feel one way. But after their first year, I think when they see things in hindsight, then they, they really appreciate the program. And then we tend to um, have good relationships throughout their time in college. It's always both mutually beneficial. I think uh, I learn a lot from them, and I think they learn a little bit from me, so it's always good after that. It gave me um, foundation, you know. It taught me how to switch it up and make it still be acceptable to be who you are. You know what I'm saying? It taught me how to show professionalism in class and show your teachers that, you know, you care about your education, and still you can be yourself while doing so, which I feel like is the main important thing with our coach. And it mainly taught me to just stay disciplined, you know, because early on, a lot of the... Um, rules and guidelines they had, I felt, were like overwhelming. But they actually are helpful and it stuck with me, those habits stuck with me all the way up until my senior and upperclassmen years. So I feel like it's definitely beneficial. I feel like game is like kind of like an invisible hand helping in college. Like, because 
I'm pretty sure the without game, I would probably be like embarking down the wrong path because there's a lot of fight for stuff for me to do outside of academics. If I didn't have game on my side, I feel like I would be in the position where I was uh, back in high school, which is like I was very disorganized, um, you know, losing papers that, you know, I needed for tests and exams and, you know, finals and things like that. And, uh, you know, I just feel like I'd be more stressed out and, you know, just a complete mess. So when I got into game, you know, they told us about study tables and how, you know, there's basically, there's no way where you can go, where you can go here without getting any help. So I feel like they've helped me a lot, you know, with, with grades and, you know, staying organized. As for Patrick and Nini, their journey is just beginning, but they are well on their way to becoming successful young black professionals. With my bachelor's degree, I would like to show, to show my family that college is a way out. If you like endure the process, and I would like to eventually give back to my high school. So I want to thank Dr. P personally. If you're watching this, I want to thank you for looking at me and seeing the true scholar in me that I am. Thank you too, Dr. P. I appreciate <laughs> it. And Dr. Randy.